Have you ever wondered why a narcissist seems to run from the truth like it's their worst nightmare? Like if they actually engaged with the truth, it would completely obliterate them. We're going to dive into some of the aspects today of talking about why a narcissist avoids the truth at all costs. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness of narcissistic abuse. I help break people free from trauma bonds, from being stuck in toxic relationships, mentally and emotionally feeling stuck from the toxic person, typically a narcissist. If you want to know more information about that, you can go to rawmotivations.com. We'd love to be able to work with you or be able to help direct you towards some of the challenges that we provide to help people break free. When we talk through this aspect of narcissists and lying, it seems to go hand in hand with almost every single person that we talk to of people that have been in relationships with a toxic person who continues to lie and lie and lie no matter what. Now, based on my background and based on my upbringing and based on how I've shown up, that was an integral part of my personality is I was a liar. I was a cheater. I was, and the list goes on and on, but lying was one of the pinnacle things that happened every single day, no matter what. Could be about big things, could be about small things. It didn't really matter. It just was a constant piece. And sometimes people ask, well, like, did you know that you were lying? Did you not you know you're lying? Like, what was it? And I was like, it was a habit. It was something that I began to do at an early age and kept doing to be able to protect my false persona. This idea that I'm a good person. Let me look this way. Let me act this way. Let me come across a certain way to fit into an image, to fit into a mold so that I wouldn't have to deal with different things. You see, growing up, I grew up in a household that was fairly strict. And with some of this aspect, it was like, how do I do what I want to do and fit inside that mold the best I can so that I can still do what I want to do and not get the punishment, not get the results of me disobeying or doing the things that I want to do when it wasn't acceptable in that environment. So the easiest way was to lie to start to become a false person in front of certain people. Now, for me, that aspect was difficult at the very beginning because I wasn't this amazing liar. But then I realized over a period of time, I can actually use this to my advantage. So I started to do things where I would purposely get caught in lies that weren't big lies. They weren't big issues to me. They weren't something that I really, really cared about. And then over a period of time, people would start to think that I was a bad liar because every time I'd lie, I would get caught. But then it became every time I wanted to get caught, I would get caught. And every time I didn't, I would just tell a lie and everybody would believe because they'd be like, well, he obviously isn't lying because he would have got caught. So this perpetuated for a long period of time. And part of it goes back to this aspect of this threat to a false persona. Like the narcissist gets to a place of like, let me construct this image, this false image of who I am. Oftentimes, it's for the whole purpose to manipulate and control another person's perception. It's to avoid the whole aspect of shame, to run away from the things that I'm hiding from, that I'm trying to push away, compartmentalize, move to the side. But it's how do I actually project this false image to everybody else? Typically, that's through this aspect of lying, saying, hey, this is who I am. This is what it looks like. Now, when the truth starts to come into the picture, when the truth starts to shed light into the things that are happening, then stuff starts getting exposed. You start to see cracks in the narcissist mask. You start to see, wait a second, this doesn't add up. Like the person you sold me, the person that you viewed yourself to be, the person that I thought you were, no longer seems to exist. That's because originally that version never did exist. It was fabricated for that current reality. This is the hard thing for a lot of people to get is the person that you're with, the toxic, narcissistic, abusive person that you're with, like the good version of him isn't there because the good version of him was manufactured, was put together with different lies, with different beliefs, with different stories that he had to tell himself to look a certain way, to appear a certain way, and to feel like he was an amazing catch. Now, all that had to be put together, molded together. Especially if you came into the relationship saying, well, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. It's like, hmm, great. Let's go ahead and mold the perfect version of me so it fits the perfect version of you. When in reality, it's just another lie on top of a lie on top of a lie. This is where truth becomes extremely scary for a narcissist. 
Because truth comes in with this light that sheds on it, that means that it is going to be a vulnerability. Vulnerability of what I said and what I projected might not actually be true. Narcissist hates that. For me, I always thought vulnerability was this piece of weakness, of this was something that was going to make me seem less perfect, less good, less the right image that I was trying to project. Think of it this way. You might have a narcissist that when you confront him with evidence that he's been a liar or a cheater or there's been the de deceit in the relationship, whatever it might be, oftentimes he's going to deflect. He's going to say, that wasn't me. That didn't happen. He's going to try to push the conversation any other direction than the truth. He's going to flat out deny it. Say, nope, didn't do it. That was, that was someone else. Wasn't me. I don't know how those got there. I don't know anything about that. And then a lot of them is going to gaslight you to protect the constructed persona of who he actually is. He's going to try to convince you that the reality that you're living in, the thing that you're believing, the thing that you're accusing him of is completely wrong and that you are the crazy one. And the second thing I want to bring up is like why, under, why narcissists are going through this piece of like avoiding the truth is because it, it, a piece of it is losing this control. You see, a narcissist gets a high off of controlling another person. Like if I can get you to do and say and be and act a certain way that I want you to be, that's a level of control. If I have to lie to do that, that's a level of control as well. And so it's this piece of like, I lie and I get what I want. I, I say this and I, I paint the picture the way I want it so that you do the things that I want you to do. And this is where the narcissist becomes that like puppeteer in the relationship where he's trying to control you, trying to control how you, how you look, how you act, how you see things, how you interact with others, how much you interact with others, all of these different things. And what happens is when the truth gets shed onto this, the light that comes from this starts to take away the narcissist's control over you. This is why a narcissist hates the truth hates being exposed, hates having the truth shown into his life because of the fact that he starts to lose control over you. This is why when we talk through people going through the challenges that we offer, we're not go pushing an agenda of like, hey, leave the narcissist. We're just trying to shed light because once you see light of the situation, once you have clarity of what's actually going on, you have a lot better options of making the right decision for you because you can actually see clearly versus before not having a clue what was going on. So narcissists oftentimes want to keep you in the fog, keep you in the dark, keep you struggling to figure out what is actually true so that you stay. Like this aspect of like, I don't wanna lose power and control over other people. That's the frame, that's the thought process. And so narcissists like, what do I have to do to be able to manipulate other people, situations, agendas, all these different things to get what they want? Oftentimes it comes down to this piece of lying and the truth goes against that because the truth exposes what's actually happening. Think of it this way, revealing the truth about a situation might mean that people make informed decisions. Imagine that, diminishes the narcissist's control over the entire narrative. Like he's worked to have this certain narrative, this certain persona, this certain idea. And when the truth comes in, it exposes so much. This is the piece that I realized that unless I actually got clear with the truth, nothing was going to change in my life. I was going to continue to go through this cycle over and over and over and over. It didn't matter how many affairs I had. didn't matter if I left my wife and went to other people. It was still going to happen because I realized the common denominator was me. Like it didn't matter who I went to, what happened, what I said, what I did. It always ended the same. There's always this dead end cycle where I was like, this isn't working because it was my inability at that point to be truthful. Once I started down the road of uncovering the lies that I believe and started to work on myself, it came to this place of like, I want to reveal all of it because if I reveal all of it, there's nothing that's left in the shadows that can suck me back in. But instead, the truth is what actually sets a person free. Hard part is people actually accessing that and actually doing it. The last thing I'd say that a narcissist runs from the truth is to protect the self-esteem, which oftentimes is pretty fragile, and the avoidance of shame. 
You see, behind the mask of the confidence and the facade of like being this amazing person, the narcissist has low self-esteem. The narcissist is running from guilt and shame, trying to blame it on other people, trying to rage out to avoid it, all these different things to avoid feeling bad. Really, that's the baseline piece of it, this piece of shame. You see, beneath all the arrogance lies this fragile sense of self, of who that person actually is. The truth brings up their deepest insecurities, leading to this intense shame. Now, it's hard because some people are like, well, yeah, but shame's not a bad thing. Like, shame helps me understand where I'm messing up. Like, shame doesn't make me hurt other people. Totally get that. That's just not the frame that a narcissist is in. So as a result, shame is this big thing that seems like it's going to murder me. Like it's going to kill me. So I have to avoid it however I can. So my thought process was like, let me lie. Because if I lie, then I don't feel shame. But then when I lie, I do feel shame because I just lied. And the guilt comes in and the shame comes in. And then typically layer on with another line. It provides this temporary relief to be able to get away from it for a short period of time. And so this thing keeps perpetuating over and over and over again. And so you're going to see this sometimes where the narcissist is going to like run away from the lies. Sometimes it's just out of fear, fear of the consequences of what is going to happen if the truth comes out. Sometimes you'll see this with a narcissist that will go through almost like a breakdown where all of a sudden he'll be in the corner, like crying on the floor, screaming, like, like punching himself in the face, like running in the walls. Like there's, there's a lot of extreme examples, but it becomes out because he's like, I don't know how to deal with the truth. That's really what it is. It's like, I don't know how to deal with the exposure that I just got caught cheating, that I just hurt someone and I have to own that it was me. I can't blame it on anyone else. It would actually was me. Like there's so many different pieces. Narcissists fear being held accountable for their actions. And so they're going to do anything they can to avoid, to deny, to run away, to gaslight all these different aspects, to keep you hidden, to keep you in the fog so you can't make a decision. If you're in this place where you're navigating some of the complexities of a relationship with a narcissist, I want you to consider joining our 45-day Clarity Challenge at claritychallenge.net. If you want more personalized support, explore the option of working with me accelerated in a one-on-one environment or in a group setting, like please go to rawmotivations.com. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more insights and understanding about healing from narcissistic abuse.